We are reading from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudaniti, verse number nine. O oh, mind, leave all great things or persons far from you and go to Vrindavan with love. For there is a divine jewel a nectar stream of good moods named Radha there who redeems the sincere souls. O oh, mind, Leave all great things or persons far from you and go to Vrindavan with love. For there is a divine jewel, <clears throat> a nectar stream of good moods named Radha there, who redeems the sincere souls. The Divine Jewel of Sri Vrindavan. Transcendental Greed is the very life force of Raga Bhakti. When a devotee becomes greedy after the pure loving mood of the eternally perfect associates of Mohan in Vraj, he enters into the field of Raganuga Bhakti. This is, I think, a great, um, or I feel a great example or a great definition, maybe, of the word sincere in the verse. Who redeems the sincere souls. The soul doesn't have to be pure. We don't have to come to Vrindavan, come to Radharani, pure and eternally perfect. We just need this greed. This greed for this pure loving mood. And if we have that greed, and it's sincere, if that greed is honest, if it's sincere, if we're not if we don't have other other materialistic goals or sights or desires, if we're sincere, if our greed is 100% focused, stai bhav, in this pure loving mood, then Radharani will naturally redeem us.
When a materialistic person becomes greedy, he becomes like mad and he forgets his body and everything related to it while searching for his wanted object. This is mundane greed. But that greed, which appears in the heart at one moment and disappears again the next moment, cannot be called real greed. Sri Vishwanantha Chakravartipad writes in his Raga Vart Vartma Chandrika The Raganuga devotee is as absorbed in his desires for devotion as a lusty man is in thinking of the fulfillment of his desires. Unless there is strong eagerness, the sweetness of Raga Bhajan cannot be understood. So through this sincere greed, this desire, being absorbed in this desire, as Vishvananta Chakravarti Pad writes, through this desire, then the sweetness of Raga Bhajan can be understood, experienced, felt. If the greed, the desire is not there, the sweetness in the bhajan is not coming. The devotee always thinks, when will I get the service of my beloved? This eagerness is the life force of Raga practice. And we see this eagerness, these questions come up in every verse of these books that we read. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, at the end of every verse, when their visions vanish, they're again praying, crying for this. When will I get this service? This indescribable eagerness, this burning desire. This is the life force of our bhajan, of our practice. Hmm. It's good to, Jai Shri Radha, Jai Guru. It's good to point that out, uh, Mahatma. Because it's really important to remember that there's nothing you can do to, for this greed. There's nothing you can. Uh, you, there's nothing you can do to get it. It it comes, so you can cry and scream and uh, roll on the banks of Radakund. But if it's not for you, it's not for you. It's mercy, the greed. So we cannot. Um, if we want to have greed, then we're in uh, material greed. It has to be a greed that arises naturally. And I've always felt that this word greed is a little bit too strong, even though for some devotees, I'm sure it's 
it's uh, appropriate. For me, it's much more a gradual feeling. Uh, much more uh, organic and soft. But I, I recognize that for some it can be uh, very strong. But the point is it cannot be mental greed. It can't be, I want, give me. It has to, it has to be a, a kind of wanting from the heart that doesn't pass through possessiveness and attachment like a material attachment. Dad. Well, yeah, I think that's such a beautiful point, Uddhava, that this greed, it's, it is mercy, 100%. And, and it does grow over time. You know, when we hear the intensity, the passion of the prayers of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami and Srila Prabhunanda Saraswati, it can be easy for me as a neophyte devotee to be like, man, I want it, but my body's not like, you know, shaking out of separation and rolling on the ground in tears. Um, I have this greed, but I, but I feel like this is like way above my level of greed, but trusting that this, this greed grows with time, just like our practice. This desire comes from mercy. And as we, um, as we spend time in our practice, as we are in association with other devotees that have this greed, then naturally this grows. And it is, as you beautifully described, not something that we do. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go out and get this greed. It's like, no, this has to come, come from mercy, come from, as Gore always puts, someone who has it, you know, and, and this I think is so beautiful because Because there's so many around us that have this greed in our sangha of higher levels than than I have. And so often when, like for me, when I think of like mercy, I think, oh, this, and this is my Maya speaking, but I think like, oh, this mercy has to come from Gurudev. He's, you know, the highest level of realized soul and we we have to get this. But this greed, this desire, like our sangha is full of beautiful devotees who have varying levels of greed and a lot of them very, very high levels of greed, very high levels of desire. And we can steal this, this greed, we can absorb this greed through spending, spending time in association with them. And to me, that's really in inspiring is, um, is that mm. opportunity to be in association with others who have those higher levels of greed. Very nice. Like the, like the people who get up at two o'clock in the morning to come to these sharing sessions. I'm, I'm happy you use the word um, inspiring. This is, I think this is so important. Maybe it's the teacher side of me. That uh, I spent so many hours being discouraged and looking for inspiration. And I know that this is for devotees, everyday devotees, this is maybe the greatest blockage that it doesn't come fast enough or deep enough, or why can't I get it? Or I'm, I've been doing all my. I've been doing all my duties, going to Vrindavan, doing my rounds, and, and yet, but already the fact that, well, already the fact that your soul is in a human body is auspicious, but already the fact as well that you're there, that you're there in Vrindavan, or that you're here in the class, or that you're asking the questions, or that you're wondering, or thinking about it and, and longing for it, this is already the greed. You know? So anybody who is asking the question about greed already has at least a little of it. Mm. So this should be an encouragement for all of us who are dreaming of more greed. <laughs> yeah, 
I always love your your comments and your perspective on that. I feel like you always have that that approach where it's like, oh yes, these are these are realizations because you are that you already have them inside you. You're just you're just realizing them. And so everything that we have is inside us. And for me, for my Western mind, I have this very like fast approach kind of formulaic thought. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and do A and B. And because of that, I'm going to get this result of C. And this is not the way at all that this path works. And um, I feel that like there's so many examples, Gurudev, our Gurudev being a classic example of how this formulaic approach to interacting with him or you know, our path is not in this linear formulaic method at all. And this can be really challenging for me has been really challenging, like coming from the West where I'm like, all right, I'm an achiever. I'm going to go out and do it, you know, but it's like this path is like, it's not something that we do. It's not something that we achieve. It's, it's something, well, as Ram Dass says, it's not something you do. It's something you become. And this becoming takes, takes a long time. And it's always been kind of comforting for me knowing that like, you know, I've spent my entire life up to a few years ago developing these habits, these anartas, these, these ways that I operate and see, see, see my life, my world. It makes sense that that's not going to be erased overnight and a brand new, you know, a brand new blackboard is going to be drawn out in this, in this pathway. It's like, it takes time to gradually shift those over. And, um, and that time is necessary because I think Gurudev shared one time, it's like, if the progress is too fast, like if it's like trying to climb stairs. And so if you are gradually climbing stairs, one stair at a time, then you can climb the staircase, but if you try to run at the staircase and jump two, three at a time, you can maybe trip as you're trying to jump up and you fall back sometimes even further back than where you started. And to me, that's a, another kind of like, for my Western mind, I'm like, well, okay, I'll try to accept that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's just no way of knowing. And Think of it this way, if you could know, then there would be nothing mystical about it. If you could know, it wouldn't be divine. If you could know, it would be your mind. So in a way, let's be grateful that we can't know when it will come. But sometimes it comes faster. I look at you two, dear ones, you and Sadve, who have been hanging around for only, what, three years, two, three, four four years, and have come so far. It's all your mercy, Uddhava. Um, and I wanted to pose the, um, I love that greed, thinking about this, like we already have a little bit of desire, that's why we're all here right now. And then it's sincere, and it can grow, and yes, through time, but also for me, what was coming was through relationship. And, and in particular, um, like Mahatma pointed out so nicely, relationship through other Rasika Vaishnavas, and then relationship through our Acharyas by reading their, you know, their direct experiences of divine service. And, and then, of course, um, relationship with, with Swamini and seeing her greed. I mean, she's always in this, like, desire for for serving Mohan, and I feel like maybe, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on how, how greed can grow through a relationship. I, that's what was coming to me. Oh. Beautiful. Okay. You, you describe it beautifully. What's more to add? <laughs> it comes, as you say, through not through arguments and logics and words, it comes through mood. And we all know how mood can spread in a room or across a continent or across uh, the universe. It comes through a, a kind of feeling which cannot be bottled and bought and sold and cannot be 
put in the material form. And that too, if there were, you know, a, a recipe like baking a cake for having this experience of gathering greed, then of course it wouldn't be greed. It would be a cake that you eat up and then it's gone and you have to bake another one. So it has to be, it has to be mysterious. The beauty of Vrindavan is that there's always another cake coming. <laughs> this is the mercy. <laughs> Shripad thinks to himself, How can I become so fortunate to be the broom to sweep the yard of the Kunja? Oh, mind, throw all other great efforts. such as worship of the gods, performance of fruitive activities, gathering of empirical knowledge, and the making of extensive pilgrimages far away. They are just stumbling blocks on the path of pure devotion. Wow. I mean, to me, that kind of like, that sums up everything, really. It's like, get, let everything else disappear don't focus our our time our energy there's only you know there's 24 hours in a day and for us in in western bodies i know at least for me like i i don't even have 24 hours to be able to commit to to this you know a big chunk of that i spend sleeping and then others of that i have other material obligations family work these other dynamics and so when we actually look down at like um at the time available that we have to us and certainly our, our goal is to have all of these um activities throughout our day become become spiritual and this is this 24 7 um that's beautifully described here in our in our sangha and when i look at like my actual um how to spend my actual like time in in sadhana i guess would be the word i think um we're we're hearing here from shripad like get rid of worship of the gods this external worship this religious practice get rid of fruitive activities the gathering of empirical knowledge, so we don't need to read all the books. The making of extensive pilgrimages. To me, I feel like that's like extreme austerities. You know, we don't have to go and, I don't know, do some of these austerities that we hear about in these books, the saints of Raj, saints of Bengal, that are incredible to hear what the human body has been capable of or is capable of doing at least for those human bodies but what we're being told here is like not only do you not have to do those things you should throw them get them completely out of your mind yeah that's that's nice that that they were able to do that but that's not for me i don't need to do that shripad is telling us that like that's not necessary in fact not only are they not necessary they will hinder our path 
of pure devotion. They will hinder our process because there are stumbling blocks. We'll get distracted. We'll spend all of our time thinking like, man, I have to go and sit in Radhakun for 20 hours and recite this one mantra 108 times. And only by doing that will I be able to reach my ultimate goal. And that's a stumbling block is what we're reading here from from Sripad. Only one, uh, only one pilgrimage is needed, says Gurudev. Yeah. The 40 centimeter one. That's it. Oh my God, sometimes that feels so much further than 40 centimeters. <laughs> it is. It's the hardest one. You're absolutely right. Yeah, sorry, I got, I, I got, no, no, that was my fault. Sorry, I got, I got excited. I'll, I can slow down. She don't hate. Radhe. Radhe, my dear. I love pilgrimage. So um, I have to think about this point. And what I feel is that it's uh, a meaning of uh, external pilgrimage to to get some blessing for something material. But actually, what I feel is that we are all on a pilgrimage, but on an inner pilgrimage. And uh, we have a very, uh, the goal is, is very high level. This is not that we like to get something material, good luck, good wife, gold and silver. But our goal is really the service of Sri Radhika. And so we are on a pilgrimage. We are all pilgrims. This is my view. And um, so if we go to Vrindavan, it's an inner way. And to reach Vrindavan, it's an inner way. You can go Vrindavan materially. You will never reach Vrindavan. <laughs> you see something. You see some garbage there and tuk-tuks and many things you, you, you don't need. <laughs> mm. But I, I, I always felt in my life I'm a pilgrim. And uh, I'm very happy to be this. And all my ways, when I go to Jerusalem or, or Rome or Santiago, or wherever I went, I want to see my Lord. I want to find him. I want to clear my, my vision. And now Vrindavan is uh, opening this, what I'm looking for, I found now. But I'm still a pilgrim because I'm not a, at the end of my pilgrimage and I think that we are never finished our pilgrimage even if we get the the service we see in Raghunath sometimes he is uh, judged maybe from Swamini something wrong then he is separated and again he want to see her so I feel very well as a pilgrim. Even here it's described as I have to uh, make this far away from me, but this inner pilgrimage, I think it's a beautiful uh, feeling and a nice view to feel like a pilgrim. Mm. Thought was sharing hey. that um, a a pilgrim has greed, desire to to drive. Hundred percent. 
we say Eudrea when we are on the way to Santiago because it's so far, it's 800 kilometers and every pilgrim uh, is, uh, sometimes you have a, uh, uh, you are, uh, what is it, uh, bodily problems on the way because you are maybe not trained for this and uh, many problems coming, open legs and, and uh, uh, so many, many pro problems. And in the middle age, many people left body on this way because it was very dangerous also. So, uh, the, uh, they, they, uh, encourage each, each other with this Eudrea. Go on. Go on your path. Don't stop. And what language? And this is what, huh? What it's language? Spain. In, in Spain, in Spanish. Spanish. Uh, but I think it's an old, uh, it's, it's even a very old uh, description of this. No? Eutrea. Maybe it's also Basque. I don't know. But this is what, uh, what you listen on the past. Go on. Don't stop. And um, yeah, this is what we actually also doing when we uh, uh, every day reading in the books, we are uh, we calling each other Eutrea. Okay. Go on, don't stop. Yeah, this is the beauty of of association of of this opportunity yeah. that has been created and i was just actually sharing with gory yesterday i was like thank you so much for for pushing me for putting a fence around my seat i was like a little bit off mentally yesterday morning and my body wasn't feeling super good and so i came down all like curled up and was you know my mind was telling myself okay i'm just gonna sit here and read quietly i'm not really like inspired to share and then of course gora you know one paragraph in feels into this and it's like what do you think about this? Mahatma. <laughs> eh? Eh? And it's like that gentle pushing is such a, such a beautiful way to, well, to steal that greed from someone else when we don't have it. Right, makes, um, uh, stronger. Sorry. No, just uh, it's between you two this discussion, but uh, just take a minute um, and go deeper into what happened there. When uh, when Gaudi says, "Look in that," what do you think about that paragraph, Mahatma? I mean, there's a there's an emotion of care coming to you. There's an emotion of recognition. There's a recognition of your thirst to be seen by Gaura, a senior devotee whom we all love. This is how greed transmits, to go back to uh, Sadvis. Just by this one, if we can stop and meditate on just what happens when, when, when we speak to each other in kind ways, the, the love we need to give meets someplace the love that needs to be had and felt and and this is where greed grows mm. recognition recognition you'd put it simply that one soul is interacting with another soul and not just two bodies okay mm. Yes. Empathy is a is a form of love. Yeah, yeah, empathy. And it's also we if we feel others, we can also feel ourselves. This is what Jesus meant when you have to love your your Lord with your full attention and your full power and everything, and your next like yourself. Because when we find a way to love others on the soul level, 
we also find a way to love ourselves. Yeah. And this is a, a, a complete form of, of love. And then we feel the love inside ourselves. And this is a, a, a way to realize our Swamini, the energy of our Swamini inside our body. It's, it's here. It's in the heart. So she is present, but to realize her in a person, not only the energy, but in a personal form, we also need a form, a spiritual form. We cannot recognize this person with the material eyes and material senses, so we need this the spiritual form to see her in her bodily beauty and serve her in this uh, in this way so and this is uh, we get by the mercy of herself in the form of our guru there he is uh, the one who is uh, the the arm was Sosestas. The extended arm? The extended arm of Swamini. This is uh, Gurudev. No. <laughs> what I feel. So... And I agree 100% that uh, the greed and the seva is, is a, is a really a kind of mercy. It's a, it's an act of mercy. It's not by our own doing. It's really this, uh, when we get the attention of Swamini, then this mercy is coming. Right, Suniti? So, Rade Rade. Good morning. Rade Rade. Thank you for beautiful sharing. So, here, this verse first said, Oh, mind. This is a very unique point, what uh, now we are talking. It's not like uh, uh, surface re activities, no. First important is mind. Which kind of eagerness, which kind of determination we have. That's why Gurudev said we should read Manasiksha by Raghunata Dasa Goswami. Ragnata Gauswami is our Prema Prayojana. He shows a way how to get our greed to serve Swamini, how to attain this Swarupa City, Manjari Baba. Then he stress here again, O oh mind. That's why, so, now we are encourage each other and uh, it's very difficult to explain about mind by word. We are surfacely using, using word, but actually what we are doing is empathy now. We feel each other, then automatically, spontaneously word is coming. By flow of Ananta Dance Baba. This mind is very unique. And thank you for sharing how to make our mind more eagerness and connect with associate. Chirirade.
but that makes it also visible that we can uh, tell the mind with with which topics he has to use himself. There is a higher uh, author authority. The mind is not the highest authority. So there is a possibility to control the mind. Right? So we we can we can decide we can decide in which direction we are going. We can uh, 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 use our mind for the matter, for the material, thinking, what happened in the world. Okay. Or we can use our mind on, uh, with reading these books and enter in the in this uh, beauty of the inner way. And so this is there is a decision possible. This is what we can do, but even this decision is uh, is also an act of mercy. What I feel, but for this we need some greed, and this is really something is coming inside. We can say it's also mercy, but uh, I mean when I wake up in the morning before two o'clock there is really there uh, I need some uh, some strong uh, what is it like desire otherwise my mind will tell me oh it's better to sleep now it's nicely warm in the bed and so on there are many things uh, appearing in, in that mind. But uh, there is also a power to control this, uh, this thinking. And uh, I, make, I make the other thing more important that this is coming by the, by the feeling that I have only a limited time to grow in my spiritual uh, relationship to Swamini. I have a limit time in this life. Many around me now last time left their bodies uh, uh, very fast without any sickness before, like also our Raguna. It was, it was uh, surprising to everyone that he left body so, so quickly. And in my uh, uh, close uh, relationships others also left in the last two months and uh, so that makes uh, it more intense for me this feeling that we have a limit time we cannot believe that it's uh, maybe uh, quickly uh, finished this life and maybe it's it's true maybe it's uh, Again, 20, 30 years, why not? It's possible, but it's also possible tomorrow. So and, uh, if we realize this, then we know it's uh, the importance of to use this possibility. We are now in, in, a, in a beautiful group of like-minded souls. This is not, uh, uh, this is not selbstverständlich. What is it? Self-evident. Obvious. Obvious. Uh, not so many uh, have this and can grow quickly in the association. And even not so many have the opportunity of uh, such a elevated spiritual master. Mm. You can look around. And uh, so this uh, constellation is extremely uh, fortunate and that to use properly and uh, so that 
this importance uh, we have uh, we can feel and that makes greedy also so i we understand this importance we see the world is breaking down around us uh, because this world is temporary and we just got uh, the opportunity to find a way up by the service to our Swamini. And this is the greatest gift she brought in this Kali Yuga. And it's now, it's available to me. This is a unique thing. And so to, to enter in this, I feel very, uh, very blessed as a pilgrim mm -hmm. on the spiritual path. Yeah. By adding this um, phrase, this drawing of attention that um, Kishore Didi so beautifully pointed out, this O oh, mind to the sentence right before the sentence we were just talking about, throw all other great efforts. Sripad is maybe, maybe praying, showing us, not only throw these from our physical practice, also throw them from our mind. Don't even think about them. Concentrate our desire, bring it into this laser-pointed sty bob, this single-pointed focus. Don't even think about worshiping, worshiping the gods, fruitive activities, gathering of knowledge. It's not to not do these activities, don't engage in these activities. Also, don't even let them come into your mind. Like, please, mind, mm. let, this, let this go. Like, I don't need to gather empirical knowledge. I don't want to be performing fruitive activities. And um, let me be, let my mind be single pointed focus on my goal. Mm. So it's a prayer to the mind, Mahatmaji, right? Yeah, exactly. He, he has to become our friend. So I think in the as it was in the Bhagavad Gita, that the, the mind can be your enemy, but also your best friend. So both is possible. No? And uh, there are uh, there are different prayers we we know uh, to the mind. So please, mind. Be careful and help me like this. Become my friend and uh, and and engage, be engaged in the spiritual path. This is also a prayer to the mind. Oh, mind! It's not O oh, Swamini or Krishna. It's O oh, mind. Right. Yeah, I, the. I mean, our mind is necessary, right? Like, without our mind, we can't, uh, even even on our spiritual path, it's not possible to read these books that the feelings come from. It's not possible to um, kind of develop these pictures in our mind, uh, or develop these pictures that obviously in our mind of of these beautiful the things that are happening. And here, Guru Dev before mentioned about this my, um, verse or mind, is actually, it's not mentioned, we should stop, we should not stop to serve our company, we should not stop to serve our family. Mm. We are living in daily life normally, but the point is in mind. Which consciousness are you doing? Here written, Anantadas Baba says, please forget this kind of things. But this is not uh, uh, 
for us not to stop our activities, but not to attachment, not do attachment about these things. This is also good they said, I remember by your mercy. Shirade. Hmm. And go to Vrindavan. What is the meaning of go to Vrindavan? This is a pilgrimage. Again, we are on the path. Vrindavan is the goal of our pilgrimage. Mind. Be aware of Vrindavan. This is our meditation point. And who is there? This is our Swamini and our service. That we will find in Vrindavan. Yes, so I heard from one devotee, what comes in my life in material body, even though it's not only karma, it's everything comes from mercy of Radha. Good things, some difficulty, also she tried to make us Radha dance. Everything mm. is practiced. Like a key down garden, you know. Someone who could say, and someone will call say it's karma. One point is true. But this karma come from where? Everything come from Radha's mercy. Because they need us to go back there. Otherwise they cannot do Rira. They need us. I was just feeling into this word that they, that um, Anantas Babaji uses, great efforts, throw all other great efforts. Uh, great effort is something that we do i feel like there's like action and like doership associated with a great effort and um our path is one of effortlessness and so these things happen automatically and um, <clears throat> i feel it's a nice um kind of idea to key in on and maybe dive a little bit into is like, oh, mind, like, remove these thoughts of great efforts. There is nothing to do. Everything comes through mercy, and so there is um, no... no great effort that I need to to do action I need to take only to have this desire. This is what viewer means, for both teachers. Mm -hmm. Not nothing to do but be entirely present in order to view. Thank you for summing up what I was dragging on, trying to say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, 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 that was perfect. I was like, it's kind of stumbling there. That was that was exactly how I was feeling. You t words were beautiful. But, you know, viewing, it sounds like you were lazy and passive, but it's it's uh, an immense effort to view. That's a, that's the point. Uh, that is not the meaning that we uh, become... Uh, uh, what to say, 
like a lazy person who is uh, in a passive way. No, no, the Manjaris are never passive. They are always uh, engaged in the service. But uh, the meaning of that uh, is here to come from a material mind and the uh, desires of a material mind to a spiritual mind and the realization of a spiritual service. I will, for sure, I will do my material duties uh, even better than a materialist. But I'm not attached on this because I do it as a service to my Swamini. And when I do this seva to my family, I do it actually to my Swamini. Because I can see in my family members, in their hearts, my Swamini, the love of my Swamini. I become never, I will never get uh, inactive. As you can see even Gurudev, when there's some new devotees coming, he will always try to balance there in the material and the spiritual way, because then they, he know, then they can grow. Otherwise, they will be in a, maybe they uh, like to enter an ashram to stay there and uh, not earning some money, and they are always suffering in the, in the matter, because their mind is always thinking about um, where I get my next uh, 10 euro to, to survive this uh, this week. And he is not uh, in, uh, in, in the meditation of Swamini. So, this to balance and uh, uh, to grow even in the senses, but in the, in the spiritual senses. So, this is a, a, a fine tuning that Gurudev is making with us. And uh, I remember when he told uh, the, 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 the leader here from Govindas, uh, and now your company is my company. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, take this burden on your shoulder. Now it's my company. And, and she was uh, so shocked. <laughs> At that time, she could not recognize what is the meaning behind it. So uh, she felt that uh, she had to give uh, Gurudev the company, like uh, when he asked for your pocket or like this. <laughs> and, and now uh, she understands. <laughs> such a good story. <laughs> and uh, that was really funny. And uh, this is what, what when he uh, when we offer all our goods to our Swamini, and we realize her mercy behind everything we get in this world, even this society, this association, the guru, but also every every good we get is a mercy. But we are not attached on this. This is what Gurudev makes this example of a lotus flower. It's in the water and in the mud, but it's not touched by the water. So we have to be in the matter. Uh, and we, we have to realize it's all a blessing. But we are never inactive. We are not thinking, oh, Swamini will do. All Krishna will do. This is a fatalism, and we make we make them to our servant, and then we are no more servant. Oh, Swamini will do. So I can sit here and be relaxed like this, but I also have to take care of my own, my my everything, and I have to serve her with my body, even in the matter. Uh, with my mind, even in the matter, as long as I'm not like Raghunath, completely absorbed by her mercy again in the spiritual world, with the spiritual body. So I have to train this every day and every second to be her maidservant and feel like her maidservant. 
And I'm sure that she will uh, open uh, the view to every one of us by this uh, bhajan. It's a bhajan we do. And Gurudev always said, if you, if you engage your mind only with Sarani, she will for sure she will open this view and give you the seva. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Why should I go anywhere else than to Radharani's abode in Vraj? Why should I visit innumerable places of pilgrimage? You see the transaction, huh? <laughs> We speak together with with uh, with uh, Ananda Das Babaji. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny, it's isn't that? Right? That happens quite frequently, I find. <laughs> and we're talking about something, and then one line na later, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a commentary coming <laughs> to that point. And he is right. Why should I visit innumerable places of pilgrimage? I only like to visit one place of pilgrimage, not innumerable. My goal is fixed now. I know where to go. Mm. So I fix it on one point. And then I'm strong. That makes this, this fixation is, 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 the, uh, is the key point of my pilgrimage. As long as I go here and there and looking for this and that, I think, then the mind is not fixed. But by the mercy of Gurudev, we get a fixed mind. We get a real goal. And then we are one-pointed. And we are no more in innumerable places, but we... We will go to Vrindavan. Vrindavan is the only place. And this is in the verse described. Go to Vrindavan with love. Go to Vrindavan with love. So, all clear? Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj. All right? Yeah. I love to reminding myself that as you were sharing earlier, this is a prayer to the mind. And so he's saying, oh mind, like why should I visit innumerable places of pilgrimage? This means, this means that our physical body can actually go anywhere, but really it's like our mind, there's no need for our mind to visit these innumerable places of pilgrimage. Why should my mind go anywhere else than Radharani's mm. abode in Vraj? My physical body can come and go. It, it'll be here. It'll be there. But what we're what the prayer is for is for our mind to be fixed in Radharani's abode yeah. in Vraj and to not visit these beautiful. Um, yeah. If the mind is not in Vrindavan, then you can stay with your body in Vrindavan and you are somewhere. Mm. Mind is somewhere. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. This is, this is right. You can go to wherever you like to go. If your mind is fixed in Vrindavan, you will reach the goal.
in the second volume of Hari Das Dasa's book, Gaudiya Vaishnava Jivana, The Lives of Bengali Vaishnavas, we can read that a pure devotee named Shri, Shri Krishna Das Babaji, who lived in the village named Rana Badi, not far from the town of Chata in Vraj, once desired to visit some other holy places in India. So he went to Dharaka, the place where Krishna was married to 16,108 queens. When he returned to Vraj, though, Radharani appeared to him in a dream and told him, Now you belong to the group of Krishna's queen, Satya Bhama. Go back to Dvaraka. Baba was so upset with this that he burned himself up in the fire of separation from Raj and Sri Radha like a piece of firewood. In this way, Baba gave up this mortal world showing all the devotees in the world how unfavorable it is for a devotee of Sri Radha to leave Raj. One may ask, Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati. O oh, Sri Pad, what spiritual practice will you perform to have your desires fulfilled then? Sri Pad says in this verse. O oh, mind, go to Vrindavan with love. In the center of Vrindavan, Sham plays his enchanting flute. Oh, hey, give up all forms of religion and take shelter of my lotus feet. This is a, 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 another translation of Gurudev's favorite uh, uh, slok from the Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dharma Parichaya Mam Ekam Sharanam Praja And so Gurudev is uh, translating this, give up all forms of religion and take shelter of my one. Mam Ekam. He many times he explained this. Mam Ekam. Of my one. Take shelter of my one. And I also feel that this is the real meaning. I mean, there is uh, many, many ways to understand uh, the scriptures and many uh, different translations are 
given. And uh, this is go to Vrindavan, give up all religious practices because it's met for the matter, for the society and so on, but this is not spiritual. Take shelter of my one, of my radical. Take shelter of love. Hmm? My one God. Hmm? Oh, sorry, my my one Vraj, it says. Very sweet. Rade, yesterday I read this same sentence. Then one inspiration come. This Mohan says, take shelter of my lotus feet. Whose lotus feet? My lotus feet is not Mohan's lotus feet. Tadika's lotus feet. <laughs> this come to my heart. Sirilade. And it's also the same thing. When we leave Vrindavan and leave Swamini, they belong together. There is, without Swamini, there is no Vrindavan. And if you go to Araka, you leave her. Then again, you're like Lakshmi Narayan and this. You like to serve the controller. It's a big difference between Dvaraka and Vrindavan. And our Swamini we only find in Vrindavan because she is the heart and she is actually uh, the, the she is the one who is uh, the foundation of Vrindavan. Creator. This was the what I'm looking for. She is the creator of Vrindavan, the sweetness. And as more we realize this Vrindavan of Swamini, we realize the sweetness of the Mohan. Beautiful. And I cannot uh, follow the word my lotus feet because it has always to be in a relation to Swamini. There is no Mohan without Swamini. Then it's uh, a Vishnu form. It's not this sweetness possible in Dvaraka, you will not find. There are queens. There are no cowherd girls, no maid servants. Queens, palace. Mother is not churning butter there in this palace. There is no place for butter churning or <laughs> milk cows. This is a, another move. It's also nice, but it's not our. This is not our our Vrindavan. It's a. It's a simple. It's a a loving place, full of heartwarming relationships, and this is uh, lead by love. This is, uh, you find in Vrindavan. And uh, in Vrindavan, everyone is a somehow related uh, personally to uh, Mohan and to uh, 
Swamini. So my understanding really from this sloka is uh, take shelter of my one. And uh, this is his uh, pleasure-giving potency, how Gurudev explained this always. This is Mohan's one, is his pleasure-giving potency, and this is uh, our Swamini. And the word Vaj is in that in that context what I understand. Hmm. Charanam Vraja. She is Vraj. Exactly, yeah. That's that's how I feel too. Those whose hearts have been purified by spiritual practice can hear the call of this flute. The hearts of such devotees are absorbed in the mood of Raj, and they will go there with love, eager to meet the, their beloved. Mm. Knowledge of the impersonal Brahman or the localized Paramatma and the reverential regulated devotion to the Supreme Lord will cast one far away from the path of tasting the sweetness of Raj. It is only pure or is only pure spontaneous love that brings us on the path to Vraj. And it is that love that brought the previous acharyas like Bilma Bilva Mangal. Thank you. Bilva Mangal, Jaya Dev, Chandi Dasa, the six Goswamis, and so many other great devotees to Vraj. Day and night, these devotees are crying out. Oh, where is Vrindavan? Where is Mohan? The cowherd prince who keeps a flute to his mouth. Where is that threefold bending form? Where is that flute song? Where is the Lord? 
who enchants even Cupid. Srila Narottama Das Thakur sings. I will bathe in the cool water of the Yamuna, overwhelmed by feelings of ecstatic love, raising my arms. I will wander around in Vrindavan, crying out Mohan's name. I will soothe my burning heart by seeing Radha and Mohan's trysting place, and I will roll on the ground there in loving ecstasy, calling out, Where is Radha, the queen of my heart? Where are you, O oh Lord, lifter of Govardhan Hill? Above the bower of Madhavi vines, the male and female parrots blissfully sit and sing songs about Radha and Mohan. I will sit at the foot of a tree there and soothe my heart by hearing them. When will I pass my days in such happiness. The word Sat Tadani in the text can also mean that Radhika redeems Mohan, who is Sat, real in all three phases of time. One may ask here, does Radha have to redeem Mohan at all? He is, after all, not a conditioned soul, is he? The answer is, Mohan is suffering from the pain caused by Cupid's darts. And Radha redeems him by showering him with the nectar stream of her bodily association. The root verb, div, of divya nidhana, means play. which means that the sweet, amorous play of Radha, which makes Mohan happy, 
takes place in Vrindavan. And that is why Shripad eagerly sends his mind to Vrindavan. Another explanation is that the Sat, Mohan, was eager to relish the love of Radha in Vraj and therefore descended to earth to become relieved from the burning agony of that desire. Coming as Mahaprabhu with Manjuri Bhav. Because the only way to relish the love of Radha and Vraj is with the Manjuri. Oh, it's a little different. Yeah, I was actually. He is he. This is Krishna who came five thousand years ago to relish the love of Ra, of Radha and Vrindavan. Oh. He likes to relish her love, but Chaitanya likes to relish the feelings of Radharani towards him. You relish the love. Relish a love means he is in the enjoying mood. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. There he is, this, uh, what is it? Rasika Shekara. But in Chaitanya, he came to relish the feelings of Radhika towards him. Then he changed. He, he became a subject. Yeah. Here he is the object. And uh, that makes a difference. And... Uh, in that uh, in Chaitanya, he also relished the mood of and the feelings of the Manjaris. He never relished before. But that these manjaris are always there. But uh, this was not open to this world until now. So in the in the Bhagavatam, Krishna's lila are all described but this uh, Manjari bath was not there so this is happened in Mahaprabhu in the Bhagavatam and the Vedic scriptures it's always this controlling mood of the Personality of God, hey, Krishna. But 
but Mahaprabhu brought that feelings and uh, the view from Swamini's and Manjari's side so that we also can enter in this. That was not possible in the Old Testament, we said. Mahaprabhu brought the New Testament and open it to to us till now. Radhe Radhe. Sorry, we are coming to an end now, maybe, but maybe somebody uh, can explain the complete word Divya Nidana. So, from the root word Div of Divya Nidana means play, which means that the sweet amorous play of Radha, which makes Krishna happy takes place in Vrindavan. So, I, is it right that div means play? Um, so, maybe somebody can explain this. I, I never heard this word nidana. No, the, maybe it's not in Paraguay. Hmm. Divya. You saved the hardest question for the end. So maybe, Bandanaji, this, uh, if you have a book, so maybe a little technical uh, exchanging maybe this verse 9 first and here it's written after sanskrit word to word explanation maybe it's help to you divya is divine and nidana is jewel it's written here oh okay thank, thank you, you. it's in the in last Sorry. page no, just uh, verse 9, first, way, first area of verse 9, here is the return verse. Every verse has a word to word explanation. Maybe it's help to you. But it's true, it means... Um, here, I'm just looking up in my dictionary. It means both. It means divine, divya, like uh, Kishori Didi says. And it means play. To play. It means divine, the adjective, and it means that it's the verb to play, so, which is very special, I guess, for us, if they go together. Yes, exactly. And it's also a name, Divya. So I know one devotee, her name is Divya. Divine play, right? And this means Leela, and Leela is the amorous play. Yeah. Between Krishna taking place in Vrindavan. Well done, very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, I think. <laughs> Another explanation is that the Sat, Krishna, was eager to relish the love of Radha in Vraj. 
and therefore descended to earth to become relieved from the burning agony of that desire. That divine jewel named Radha is a stream of nectar and simply by taking shelter of her one will attain the rare love of Raj. Mm. And verse 9. And uh, there is one warning in the explanations of this Baba. Uh, we have to be careful never to leave Raj if we once enter. Swamini will reject us. If you like Dvara Kamut, then go. Hmm. You are no longer here uh, needed in, in Vrindavan. So there is a, it's a clear uh, statement of her. She is a really, if you go somewhere else, if you once get Vrindavan, and then again, you're looking for something that's uh, very unfortunate for you. That means you reject her mercy. And think there is something more to... to to get somewhere else. You got the highest and still you, you go to find better place? Are you not loyal to her? That's what I feel in this. Maybe another one is as different. What do you think to this? Radhe, Radhe. I'm feeling it's really hard because I don't know who is this um, personality that I'm sure it was a very um high spirit who did this pilgrimage to Dwarka, what was his um motivation to go there? So I don't know. I cannot say anything about that. Um actually what came to my mind is my 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 yoga teacher she didn't do any um like some some yoga brands, then you have to pay money each year. You have to do whatever course again, like this kind of stuff to keep on a, a, whatever, a kind of permittance that you can teach or whatever, some like branding. So she never did that. She said, if you want to continue, if you want to deepen 
yourself naturally you will do a, a course you will do a workshop um with some teacher or with me and i found that so nice um so naturally i feel if we want to connect more with this pure love of radharani and those who really love her in her in their hearts naturally we we will go to places where we find that so that's all <laughs> yeah we go naturally and uh, i i understand uh, vandanaji same feeling i think many of all we have then Gurudev, what he says is, that's why we need mercy, such a high soul. This is the only way. This is another Das Baba said. We know this example, but uh, at least me, I have not qualified such a strong high level. I'm not like this level. That's why I beg all your mercy, Swamini's mercy. One day I want to become too like this. That's why every day we are listening these stories and cultivate our feelings. This occasion also mercy, Uttavaji also said. We need mercy only way. See you later. Raghunath Das, once he got uh, uh, his, his milk, I think, from uh, from another place, I think it was from the place where Chandravali lived. You remember? And what he did with this milk? Uh huh. This is what I understand. We have to be careful to be one pointed. In this case, there is not so much tolerance in the feelings of Radhika and her maidservants. We will not accept from other place. We will not take any prasadam from different place. We will not change our mood. We are loyal. One-pointed loyalist. This is a, I mean, this is a, maybe for, for the German mind, it's uh, more easy to get because this is our nature. <laughs> not so much flexible. <laughs> one direction we walk, but in that point it's uh, uh, also a good fortune. Because, I mean, Raghunath was not a German, as much <laughs> as I know. <laughs> so, uh, in that case, I like this very much and uh, fix my mind and Swamini, but not the, actually Gurudev fix my mind and Swamini, not me. Before I met him, uh, it was uh, a big difference. But the maid servants in our line, really, they are this. This nature is there. They will not leave these borders. They will also. They will always be the shadows of Swamini. So there is no no way out. They will naturally. They will never leave this place of love. And this is the place where Mohan is controlled by love. You are mine. 
this is the only place where one can say it like this. Hmm. Only Swamini is telling this. Shantavali say, I am yours, take care of me. But Swamini is saying, you are mine, I will take care of you. Abhinata was more strict than, than not taking a prasadam. He just, I think disciple just get the cup, the leaf cup. Only the, the leaf cup was, Only yes. The, yeah, milk, milk is um, come from the, the usual place, but on yes. even the leaf cup, uh, he didn't accept it. So more strict than German. Yeah, maybe he was German, but nobody knows. I feel that all these examples with the um, the milk, with Raghunath Das, the story of Krishna Das Babaji, they all show us the importance, continue to try to hammer in, like Gurudev does, the importance of this Stai Bhav. And I remember someone asked Gurudev one time, you know, like Raghunath, he's like this eternally perfect soul, yet he's coming out, even he's coming out of these meditations. And and how is this happening, you know? And and I can't speak for Ragnar. I have I have no feelings. Like I don't I don't know um his inner workings or anything. But I in the moment Oh. No, it's frozen. Can um, instantaneously drop out of the, can drop you out of the Leela, can drop you back into material consciousness. And so it has to be 100% of the time. I mean, 24 7, not 23 and a half 7. 24 7, our mind has to be there. And I was reminded when everyone was sharing of yesterday in the commentary by Nantadas Babaji. Um, Uddhava actually beautifully pointed it out as one of the kind of concluding thoughts, meditations for the day. The kinkaris don't leave their post for even a moment. And so this is their mood. They are fully engaged all the time and no deviation in their, in their seva, in their vision, in their desire. Yeah. The milk will be ruined by one drop of lemon. <laughs> so, I think today is a uh, Meditation is really this, how much love is in Vrindavan because of Swamini and how much fixed are the Manjaris towards her and how great is also the, how, how much shelter Mohan is taking on her lotus feet. But it, uh, the first, uh, On the verse was the divine jewel of Shifu now. It was the, under the, the verse, no? And that's, uh, the purity for today, I think, what I feel. Hmm. The divine jewel of Shifu now. I think we are a little yeah, sorry. over the time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes, 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 yeah.
Yeah. He not much changed. Um mm. he's he's doing well. We got to talk to him for a while yesterday and so it was like oh. seems like he he was back in to me he was a little bit more back in the kind of consciousness of or I don't know consciousness, but he seemed to be a little bit less um fully engaged in in the the that that seva that he was previously engaged in he was he was kind of like back and like asking about other things around the ashram and like how things were going and this and that and kind of like back in back in the 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 mood that we all know and know and love and uh, <laughs> So that, I don't know, I, I, to me that, that might not, he might've always been in that mood. Um, but that's kind of what I was, what I was perceiving was his, um, maybe his, his bandwidth was able to kind of expand back to Vrindavan world and Mungir Mandir a bit more than maybe was previously possible. Mm, yeah. But that also might be an incorrect interpretation of <laughs> where he's at who knows but he's doing good long story long <laughs> okay thank you so we at the moment we not call him because we understand that he is now in uh, in that family affairs with uh, uh so many uh problems there on no? Yeah, I was feeling similar. I kind of like I sent him some voicemails, but then yesterday I called him and he had the classic like, "You forget me," you know. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, Gurudev, <laughs> like what to do?" You know, like I was just, I don't know, feeling that you were. And then he was so quick to just get right into as he does with all of us, like right into what you know I have going on in my. I'm like, Gurudev, how's it going there? Good. So, how's Saad we doing? How's the baby? Like, how's the pregnancy? You know, just uh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right back <laughs> into into our our problems and our world. And so, oh my God, I'm sure he would he would love to hear from everybody. <laughs> you forget me. <laughs> I know. I'm like, good <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, Majid. Thank you, all of you. Jai, see you, thank you, my see you soon. Shri Radhe.